Okay, I'm not gonna lie. We're just kind of fighting and doing this at the same thing. It's kind of hot. I, I'm so mad at him, but also, this is so confusing. I'm emotionally not okay with this. No, stop it. Deny, why would you do this to us? No, stop. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXXChic, and we are back with another reaction to The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. We're now onto episode four, which is called What We. <sighs> All right, guys, this is the episode. This is the one that we have been warned about and has been praised by the people who were fortunate enough to get an early screening. People have been saying this is it. Like, this is the episode that is like, it's the pinnacle. This was written by none other than our queen, Miss Denai Gurira. And we already know that she's a very talented woman. She's written plays and a lot of other things. And yes, she she put her foot in this, apparently. She absolutely killed it. I expect no less from her. She is literally just the epitome of black excellence. And apparently this is just an amazing episode. The early reviewers all said that this was it. This this episode was beautiful. It was heartbreaking. It was, it was all those things. Like it brought all the feels and I can't believe it's only 48 minutes. I'm like, 48 minutes when like four of those minutes are credits? Are you kidding me? But we'll take it, we'll take it. So I am excited to see this because yeah, I just, I, I've heard so many good things about it. It's been almost hyped up too much. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'll be disappointed, but it's definitely been hyped up. Even the few critics that were not big fans of this spinoff all said that this was the episode that they felt was the best of this particular spinoff. So expectations through the roof. And not even if I hadn't heard all those amazing reviews, the three episodes prior have been all bangers. They've all been knocked out of the park. So, so, so good. So of course my expectations are up here for it to be a really good episode and that they're gonna keep getting better. But let's just uh, talk about how we got here. Last episode, we had oh, Rick and Michonne trying to function within the CRM, but they're in completely different pages. Rick. Is just happy for her to be there, but he gets a reality check very quickly from Jadis, which we saw at the end of episode two, going into episode three. And she's told Rick that if he tries to leave with her, that it's going to be game over for Alexandria, which means for him, his family and the people who are his chosen family. And that's too much weight for Rick to bear. And then on top of that, we see that Thorn has been promoted and that she is now all in on the CRM. She is a believer. She wants to go all in with this plan. So now the one possible ally he had on the inside is also gone. And Okafor is not there, but I mean, we know that Okafor would not have been pro Michonne either. So anyway, <clears throat> my man Rick is feeling very cornered. And so he tries to send Michonne away, not once, but twice. We see that Thorne tried to bring Michonne in, thought, okay, Okafor did this for us. Maybe I can do the same for her. But Michonne, she can't help it. She's a leader. She's someone who gets things done. And on their first little excursion, she goes off and does her own thing. And Thorne's like, nope, she's too much of a loose cannon. It's going to look bad on me. She's got to go. So Rick at this point is like, I, I don't know what else to do. Like she's not fitting in. I can't send her away. He's really starting to panic. And then the icing on the cake is that Jada says that she's now going to be assigned to the same base where Rick is now going to be taking over for Thorne. So that means that Rick is now going to be basically under constant surveillance by Jadis at this new place and away from Michonne. So it's just, it's too much for him. And then we see that Michonne finally sees Jadis and is starting to get some of the picture. But again, she's been kept in the dark by Rick entirely. So yeah, he loses it on her, tells her she's going one way or the other. He tells her that they're over. He says some very hurtful words that we're still recovering from in the Michonne fandom even now. And we see that on the way home, Michonne said, uh-uh, this ain't gonna work. You seem to forget who you're married to, sir. And she took his butt out the helicopter. She just grabbed him and just, we might have had a shoot, we may not have, we don't know. But she said one way or another, we're gonna, we're gonna hash this out. So that's how we ended the episode. Very, very ready to get into this one. I heard I need to be prepared, so I have my tissues, I have my brown liquor. It's very early, by the way, so don't judge me, but listen, I gotta be prepared for what might come out of this. I'm ready to go. 
we've done enough of an intro. So let's do this. But just before I do, a reminder that if you want to be notified of when I do uploads to this particular show or anything else I react to, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you can be part of the family. And please, please, please keep those amazing comments coming. All the love you guys have been showing. I feel so, I feel so special, guys. It's so nice to hear from all you and just be gushing about this amazing series together. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. You can skip the recap. I've rewatched many times. Not this music being so happy when there's absolute mayhem happening. Whose radio is this? I'm coming home? Okay, are we getting meta with the music? Wait, who has a Roomba right now? Who's Who's got a Roomba in the apocalypse? She said we we're gonna be two bitches in the sea. <laughs> can you, can you swim, Rick? Where are we? This place is fancy. Welcome home. Excuse me, we have automation? We have sensor lights? Where are we? Oh, she's like, we still fighting, sir. <laughs> we can be in wonder later. We're still fighting. <laughs> oh, I love this. I love this shot. One thing about this show since day dot has been the cinematography. I don't know who's in charge but they need a raise immediately because the cinematography has been the shots, the, just the, the overall cine, like just the, the, whether it's the big wide angles or the cut-ins, somebody is working. Somebody is earning that paycheck. Mm. We can enjoy the intro because I need more time. I thought I was ready, but I'm already still, I'm feeling nervous. <laughs> I would be so scared if Michelle looked at me like that. Oh my God. We needed a timeout. Yeah, I agree. I can't believe you did that. I can't you? You said that. Your preferred temperature will be reached. Excuse me. We are having a vital conversation here. Shush. Shit. You lost your little. You lost your little call button. Water is run, like clearly the water is running, Rick. They have power. They have. A, I was about to say that Amazon thing, but you know mine's gonna go off. Okay, no food though. Rude. And they have a they have a computer, a Windows computer. Where are we? Did they fall through space and time? Oh well. 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 Can we fight later? <laughs> Listen, you better let them know. Denies like I got into <gasps> the scar. Oh my god, you see the scar? Oh my god. She's like, I can feel you born a hole through the back of my head, sir. But yeah, now you know she's been through some stuff too. Oh, so she's got one. Look at Rick literally considering pushing that damn button. You want to call them here? He's thinking about it. Exactly. I'm like, you're going to hand it to him. It's like when your black mama says to you, like, I want you to do it. When you do something stupid, you're about to do something stupid. She's like, no, I want you to do it. Do it. Do it right now. I dare you. That's what she just did to Rick. Like, I promise you. Push the button. Please. See what happened. Uh, <laughs> listening to her own rhythm. Free-spirited. Just like Judas. Mm-hmm. Bring up the kids. You've become a bit of a creative writer these days. <laughs> that note. In the getaway boat. Mm -mm. Poetry. Richard, Richard. Give another masterpiece <gasps> for your children. Children. Because I'm. You said. Want to tell them that I found their. Father. There. Look at her. She's not even. She's so mad. She doesn't realize she's talking in plural. Children. Hmm. Oh, don't you kiss your teeth, girl. Yeah, you slipped up. Even God said you got to tell him now. His name is Rick. Junior. Yeah. He's almost eight. Yeah. Yeah. You need to give me the PRB. What? I just told you you have a processing. Son. I don't know who you are anymore. I'm trying to keep you and them alive. You need to give it to me. I try I tried everything. We need to go back. Your preferred temperature will be reached. Where is that thing? <laughs> I'm in the same, I, same. This is a very important moment. 
and you pull us out of a goddamn helicopter. That's because I don't like who you are with them. You better let him know what they make you. Period. She married an alpha. Mm. Your preferred temperature has been reached. Thank God. Now shut up. Look at me arguing like I'm in the fight. Sorry. They won a long time ago. They won the day Jadis brought me here. She brought you. Yeah. See, these are the details she needs to know. She will destroy our home if I try to leave. There we go. The full picture. That's all she needed to hear, Rick. You want me to go? No. I want you to live. Yeah. That's more accurate. She's threatened by us because together, you and me, she thinks we could do anything. Could have. We can. We kill her then. Should have done that in the beginning. She left it all behind. Who we are. Where we're from. So people will find us if we did that. Okay. See, now you're getting the picture. This is all we need to do, Richard. Please. Just the truth. That's still a pretty defiant look. Bullshit. Mm. I had to get you out. To lie? To leave that note and think I would just leave? Right? Do you know me? Would you have gone if I told you? Probably not. <laughs> In fairness. <laughs> Probably not. He knows his baby. Mm. We find her evidence. We destroy it. We kill her. And then we go home. I mean... But then there's Thorn. Do you think we can do anything? That's about to say that's what matters. What did they do to you? Years of breaking him. Years. Do you still love me? Always. Don't. I've never stopped loving you. Oh, stop storming. God's no longer mad with you. Helicopter. Oh, shh. You saved our lives. Listen, she's the chosen one. Know that. So we're gone. Yeah. Are we? No. What did you say? I'm not going home. Shit. It's all right. Oh, you're killing me, Rick. You're killing me. And I'm not even your wife. You know, your son, the one you haven't asked anything about. He's protecting himself. He calls you the brave man. They're so far apart. Nat, my friend who your people killed. They're not my damn people. He said that to me once when I said... This is not what I had in my head at all. It's fair. We just got a way out. They think we're dead and you want to stay. Stay with an army that kept you against your will. And kills innocent people by the thousands. I have to keep them from coming for our home. You can't, Rick. For, you know that? They could one day. They one can't. Day? You can't stop them. He wanted me to become a part of the CRM, move up. Help him change it. I didn't have anything left, so I gave myself to his mission. His mission. Oh, wow. This is truth, though. I'm glad he finally admitted that he literally committed right before the plane or the helicopter went down. He's a prisoner here. And we have to break out. The prison's you up don't here. You to stay in prison when the door's open. You leave. Right? <laughs> Okafor's gone. Thorne's one of them. Now I'm the only one left. Exactly. How are you going to do this alone? Okafor couldn't do it alone. Keep us safe by maybe changing the CRM yeah. one day. Less than 1% Who chance. Who might come after our home and put it in danger. Yeah. That's it. Can I just lay this out for you very plainly, sir? That's not it. You're lying. But you know what? Your wish is granted. I'm out. Found you. Fought for you. Did. Tried to reason with you. Did. And now I have to go. Damn. Okay. Both staff indeed. Ooh, damn. I would want to put myself under the ground and Michelle would ever talk to me like that. Oh, God. Rick, my heart hurt, guys. My heart hurts. <laughs> my heart hurts. I can't. I don't know what to tell you. You can't make him go. 
But I get where Rick's coming from too. This sucks. I know. I know, go. I know. Come on, Rick. You have pushed through your fear before. You can do it. Come on. Oh, this sucks, you guys. Oh, my God. You better be going after her, Rick, because honestly, that just hurt me. That hurt me bad. What the fuck? Now what? Now what? What? What are we going to see? No. I mean, of course they were going to send someone. You should have kept the gear on, though, Michonne. Seriously, it's bite-proof. She don't even have her sword. Why would they... Why would they... The, the helicopter was already gone. You leave the weapon, Michonne? I don't understand why they did that. Need to find a way out. Duh! We can't breach from this aisle, even if it's a defensible position. I don't even have a weapon, Commando. Right? She's like, um, the military speak. <laughs> She's like, please. Man, no, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, this fighting, this fighting is much less painful. We can go with this. God, wait, these are scientists, right? Doctors? What is this place? They destroy any Oh, okay. Thank you, Rick. I was asking that question. Our motto, progress and redemption through innovation, is now like a sick joke to me. Is she need to I can't face how much when folks try to save the world their own way, it tends to go to shit. Mm. You better let them drop that gem on them. So so. Mm. Damn. So they weren't with the CRM. I thought maybe this was CRM location. Looks like they thought they knew it all. Oh, except... Without the killing of innocent people, yep. except that part. Can I just get those digs in? It's not you, Rick. This isn't me. How? That I would give everything, my my hand, my life for you. That's not me. That was you. This is what I need to do to keep you safe. The only time I feel safe is when I'm with you. Oh, stop it. That was beautiful. God. I'm okay. So that's what I tell your son. That his father didn't want to know anything about him because he was so afraid. Mm. You shouldn't have come. I was taken away. I didn't have a choice. You did. But this is your choice now, Rick. Big guy, huh? Soldier of the CRM. Who could? She could you still kick you your know, ass. Rick? You know that. Just so you know, Rick. I should be afraid of you. In the red uniform. Yep. I don't know what you're capable of. Yep, you that is exactly me. where you're headed. Then I'm not wondering how I will ever live with myself if, God forbid. That's why you should go. Rick, stop talking, please. Like, this is literally the plot of Anakin Skywalker. I can't. can't be with a man who's like this. <sighs> Guys, I'm not okay. I know, Michonne, I'm sorry. But you know what? You're a warrior, girl. You're a soldier. You can do this. Michonne's like, get out of my way. I will handle this like I've handled everything else in my life. Goodbye. Wow. Sorry. You're not. Wow, the desperation. I know that. God's still mad at you, Rick. Oh, not Nat Slider being the one thing that survived. You should go. Grab that handle bones. I'll get this back. Not her saying you should go. You've got to go. These bolts are holding this thing together. Okay. 
okay, I'm not gonna lie, we're just kind of fighting and doing this at the same thing. It's kind of hot. I, I'm so mad at him, but also, this is so confusing. I'm emotionally not okay with this. That's right, girl. You better show them how you broke that kill record two at a time. She's so damn good. Sir, you are so confusing. I just need to hear that. One, two, three. You okay? No. Thank you. You never have to thank me ever. Stop it. Welcome home. Not again. Really, seriously, just enough. Good, now shush. Richard, you're so confusing. I thought we broke up, I'm so confused. We're not even sure if we're clear of walkers yet, but okay, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I mean, listen, it happens. I'm an adult. You okay, Rick? I mean, it's been seven years. Let me let me calm down. I'm okay. I'm fine. She put his hands on her heart so that her heartbeat would calm it down. I can't. These two. And the music. Are you kidding me? That's the Rick we know. <laughs> so respectfully, that is the Rick we know. <laughs> oh my gosh. We needed, we could have, we could have held that a little longer. Looks like me. Oh, he's asking about RJ stuff. <laughs> I mean. Save the light brown skin. It's hard to tell I had anything to do with it. Rude. And he's stubborn. Just like his dad. And mommy, yeah. let's be real. Like his mama. He does have your good kind of heart, though. That's what reminds me the most of you. Stop it. <laughs> Not the Roomba cock blocking. What? <laughs> they may have starved. Well, they kept this place going a good while. Well, they did more than that. They kept innovating. I guess they were sick of scavenging and wanted to create another. I was like, how did they get a create? How did they get a Roomba? How did they get a computer? One dead harvest. Something has to burn to bring it back. Back to episode one. If I could change the CRM, there's a chance for future generations, a real chance. The conditioning is so deep. You're still lying to me. You're lying to yourself. This mark on your back. Yeah. It was the woman that I led him to Alexandria. College buddy. You knew her? <laughs> Thought she did. I was seven months pregnant. She stole Judith and some other kids. And I had to sick. kill all of them. We stopped her. I don't want to go into how. You killed her? Yes. And a bunch of people. <clears throat> Children. Good. <laughs> That's Rick. <laughs> He's like, I would have done the same. But I kept believing that you are not gone forever. I still believe that. That's about all we can do at this point, I guess. You did this to get away? He did. It was the only way. You thought. I don't think you can go back. Ain't that the truth? Oh, see, she she still loves the, she still loves the stump. I'm sorry. What they did to you. Stop. Oh shit! Now the building's coming down. Still. We gotta get out of here. We're running out of time. Really, you're about to go for another round. Two minutes ago. 
We need to decide what's next right now. This place is going down. Yeah, that's a distraction. <laughs> she said, Papa Squat. Not until we know where we're going. You think she's not scared of this building, Rick. She jumped out of a helicopter. After I left here, why did you come after me? You know why. Say it. I need you to. It was the love of my life. <laughs> I could have just let you go. I mm. fell on my heart ripped, ripped itself out of my chest and walked out the door. And come home with me. They've taken so much from us. Why give them any more? This hope that you have in the CRM, sacrificing yourself, it's not real. It's not. Our love, this, it doesn't get denied. That's a bar. This, this back and forth. It's hurting me, Rick. Oh my God. Yeah, you're in trouble now, Rick. I'm sorry. I don't recognize. You're hurting me. Yeah, no, sorry, Rick. Fix it. Fix it immediately, Rick. That is not how you love. No one's allowed to hurt Michonne. Not on my watch. I need you to try to tell me what is really going on here. What did they take from you? Not just by trying to get away, but by, by how I would dream. I'd meet up with Carl in my dreams. No, oh, like he met up with you. <laughs> Scott Kimple, I will never forgive you for that. But then I started dreaming of you. Yeah. I couldn't see your face anymore, just like I couldn't see Carl. I can't. I can't. Stop it. You can't just come back here, make me come alive again. If I don't know if I won't lose you again. What if I lose you and I can't figure out how to die all over again? I can't. No, stop it. Deny, why would you do this to us? No, stop. I saw you and I got so scared. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? God, this is a zombie show. Yeah, well, we're not going to survive this episode. <sighs> oh, she got him to draw Carl. <sighs> this episode just keeps punching me right in the feels. <gasps> Carl. If yeah. Carl were here right now, what would he say? He'd say, Dad, you better bring your ass home right now. I came here. Through the hell that we have both been through to take you home. We go home, Rick. Yeah. And we figure out how to protect it together. Yeah. 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 Michonne's boss. We love on each other as hard as we can. Preach. While we can. Period. Oh my God. Someone give Deny her Emmy right freaking now. I'm dead ass. Okay, now can we find a place that's literally not about to fall on our heads? God, I'm so nervous. the sexiest shot that's ever been filmed in The Walking Dead, period. Period. Rick took off the uniform, guys. Oh my god. Failure is never an option. Not an E-car! They had an E-vehicle up in here?! It's a big ship. Oh my god, really, Richard? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, not the Roomba. You should have saved the Roomba. You sure? I mean, I think we were driving. 
stick shift electric car. Yeah, why would they do that? Clearly they thought they could do anything. Yep, we can. We can make this whole damn world ours if we want. I remember that line. It was cute. Okay, guys, move. I'm nervous. How much time is left in the episode? Ah, oh, God. Okay. This happy music and everything, it's, 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 it's unsettling. Peace out, building. Thank you. You gave us everything we needed. Okay, well, that's good. That's going to draw the walkers to the building for a while. They look so beautiful. Why are they such beautiful people? Stop it. Okay, I'm scared, guys. That That's the loudest vehicle possible, by the way. Okay, don't, not yet. Okay. Okay, good. We have to stop. I need to, I need to breathe. <laughs> Need some time to process this. I didn't ask for that. I mean, I did, but I. I how did we get here? Wow, guys, that was phenomenal. <laughs> that was uh, that was a whole freaking feature film in forty six minutes. Like, what? Like, I don't even know how to debrief this. I don't even know if I should debrief this. Should I just? That was so good. That was so, so good. And can we just take a second to appreciate that that was done? That that was done in one episode, considering, because this is a condensed season of only six episodes and we had a lot to cover in a way, but I feel like not only did we cover it in this episode, but it was done so well. And uh, the acting, don't get me started. Andrew Lincoln, someone give that man his, someone give him his Emmy right freaking now. Give him his Emmy, give him his Brit Award or whatever they have over the over the pond. He deserves all the things because he absolutely killed that. He ate, there was no, crumb, there's no crumbs left. Do I have edges left? Because I don't know. There's not, they snatched everything. Let's, ugh. I'm going to try to summarize. I'm going to try not to ramble too long. Let's, okay, let's start with the fact that, <laughs> let's, yeah, we got to go through it because this really was like, a, someone said it was like a play and it was, there was like three acts in this play. First act, we have Rick in disbelief that his wife pulled his ass out of a helicopter who happened to land in a, in a body of water, thank God. Some people were saying that you know Michelle was looking out the window so she probably saw that there was water when she made that move. But honestly, I think she wouldn't have cared if it was water or a rock face. They were leaving that damn helicopter. But either way, the disbelief on Rick that his wife had the audacity to throw their asses out of a helicopter was actually funny. But he wasn't even like... It was more that he was like mad. It wasn't like he was shocked. He was like, you threw us out of a helicopter. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I did. And anyways, um, we have it there. And Michelle's just like, we we need to talk. We got to figure it out. And we see that in the first act, Rick's conditioning is still so strong. The, the pattern he's locked himself into for the last few years is still so strong that the first thing he does is look for that stupid button to call the helicopters to come pick them up. Right. He doesn't even like start to examine the fact that they were pulled out of a helicopter. He's like, let me just let me just get us out of here. And Michonne's like, she has hers. His going out again. God intervening left, right and center in this episode because he lost his. God was like, you need to have this conversation. But anyway, Michonne still had hers. He sees it. The thought crosses his mind. And as I said in the episode, <laughs> Michonne did that thing where she was like, you want to touch that walkie? You want you want that walkie? You want you want to push this button? Touch the button. Push the button. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. And see what happens. See what happens. And that man, my man knew in that moment that if he did not want to get be on Michonne's you know what list for the rest of his life, he wasn't gonna push that button, at least not then. Right? So they start to have their conversation. And she's like, I need to know what's happening because you are lying to me. You're lying to me and you're lying to yourself, which we're gonna get to. But she's like, You're lying to me, and I'm tired of it. And it's not like you. So you're going to give me the whole story. I need to understand the picture. And see, Richard forgot that he's married to a lawyer. Okay. She is a smart woman. She's a woman who is used to putting things together. She needs the picture, the whole thing, so she can put it. This woman was writing charters for whole like new world civilizations before the bridge thing happened. This woman is smart. You can't give her no little piecemeal information and BS and think she's going to take that and run away like some simple bit. That's not Michelle. She's not a simple girl, never has been, okay? So she said, you're going to outline what's going on. You're going to tell me the truth. We're getting to the truth. And so we see that Rick doesn't really want to. But, you know, Michonne's not letting him off the hook. She is just, she came in hot. She came in hot as she should. And Rick finally gives her at least the pieces around the reason 
why he's acting the way he is, at least as of late. He's like, yeah, okay, yeah. Jadis knows about us. Jadis brought me here. She's the one who, you know, I, I didn't ask to be here. She brought me here. And then our arrangement is that I stay here. I stay alive. And then when you came, you know what happened? She said she was going to go back to Alexandria and take out everyone we know. So that's why I'm doing all this. So of course, Michonne goes through the simplistic ideals around how to fix this problem, right? Let's take out Jadis. He's like, mm, she's got a file. She's like, okay, we go back, we find the file, then we take out Jadis. He's like, mm. and that's when she's like, okay, so my plan is not that crazy. It's a little simplistic, but it's not crazy. Why are you saying no, right? Because technically if Jadis and this evidence are gone, there's no reason for the CRM to think that they need to keep us, right? We can leave at some point and there's no one to follow us or at least not to know where we went, but he won't get to the crux of it. He won't say why. Right. And then he gets into the whole explanation of how he thinks, you know, that he's got to carry on Okafor's vision, you know, because now Jadis is there and, you know, which now um, he realizes that Thorne is drinking the Kool-Aid. So he's the only one now who has the same mission that Okafor did, that they got to change the CRM from the inside. Not realizing that, bro, first of all, like Michonne said, that's not even your dream. That was his dream. That was his idea. That had nothing to do with you. And two, it's just you. Okafor recruited you. And Thorne, because he recognized he could not do it alone. He couldn't turn around the CRM on his own. He needs help. So now you're saying it's down to an army of you and you think you're going to be able to do this alone, right? Like even Rick didn't recognize that the, that plan was foiled now. It's no longer going to work. He would have to put another God knows how many years finding other A's like him and seeing if they would be on the same track. Because the reality is if Okafor was still alive, he would recognize now that he lost Thorn, right? He went through all of that just for Thorn to buy into the program and would probably have sold him out when it came down to it, right? So it was a risky plan. And Michonne was trying to get him to that place. She eventually says to him, like, you want to go in there and change, possibly change an organization that you already know is evil, which I thought was really good that, you know, she kept saying your people. And he's like, they're not my damn people, Michonne. <laughs> He can say like, even in his heart, Rick was like, this don't feel right. But she's like, you're going on like a one tenth of a percent that you might be able to maybe turn this place around and hopefully maybe keep them from coming and taking out our home at some point anyways. Maybe you're willing to whisk me, risk your family and never meet your kids. I'm going to get to the kid reveal in a second. All that on a maybe. And Rick's like, and you can see when she laid it out. And this is why Rick needs Michonne. Because I said this a few episodes ago. Rick is a bulldozer. He does not really think things through like that. He's a bulldozer. He's like a bull in a china shop. He just, he sees an objective. It's like a red flag. He goes, he just goes through. He hacks and slashes his way through. He doesn't really think. Michonne is the one who will say, baby, I love the energy. I really do. But let's just, let's just, Let's just direct it in a more, let's direct it in a constructive way, right? That's Michonne. I'm not saying I hate the energy. Let's just make sure we're not blasting any and everything. Let's just make it a more controlled blast. And that's why she he needs her. And so she had to lay that out for him because I don't think Rick's ever actually sat and actually said all that out loud and realized how foolish it still is. It's like, no, sir, this, this still doesn't make sense. This is not the risk of you leaving is actually lesser than the risk of you trying to change the CRM at some point and not really just end up becoming one of their drones, right? So they have their little situation there. And then Michonne gives them what we've been wanting all season. The RJ reveal happens. And Rick is, he picks up because again, I don't even think Michonne meant to have it slip out like that. But of course, you know, she's not, you know, she's not thinking. She's mad at this point. So she says, you know, our children, them. And he's like, what do you mean our, then what do you mean? And finally, she's like, you have a son. His name is Rick and he's almost eight. And you see it like Rick is processing it. But at the same time, he's not ready to process it. He can't process it. Right. And this is why people were like, why didn't Michonne tell him about RJ back in episode two? And again, I was asking the same thing as well to a degree. But after I had time to rewatch and really marinate on it, I realized it's true. He was not ready to handle it back then. He, he couldn't have. So you see now that it's exactly why she didn't tell him back then, because he was just like, Okay, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna compartmentalize that, <laughs> but I gotta get back onto this track of we we gotta go. I gotta go, you gotta go. And in that moment, you see that Michonne's hoping that this is gonna be the fire, the ignition. Like, okay, you have a son, you've never met him. His name is Rick. We know that Rick is all about his children, right? This is the man she fell in love with, bit a man's throat out to protect his son. That is the kind of man Rick is about his children. She's like, certainly, <laughs> certainly this is what will it'll take to wake Rick up and wake, Rick is still like, outside of hearing that, he doesn't ask another thing. He doesn't ask what he looks like, doesn't ask anything about him. And then Michonne's like, what the hell? Why? Like, that's not the Rick I know. 
Rick would have been, if Rick had been there, he would have been obsessed during the entire pregnancy. He would have been obsessed with RJ as a baby. Like, no way he's just like, hmm, have a son. Cool. Noted. Where's that button so I can push it, right? So this is coming towards the end of act one. We have Michonne like, oh my God, okay, I'm hitting a brick wall. This man is not talking to me. He's got this wall up, he's got this mask and he's not trying, he's not letting me through even though I hit him with something that normally would have sh shaken him up. So she's mad at this point and hurt. And she's like, you know what? Screw it, fine. You wanna go back? Here's your damn button. I'll go, I'll go on my own. You wanted me, me gone, I'm leaving. Bye, see you later, bye. Right, takes her knife, she leaves. And we see Rick and uh, Andrew Lincoln, the actor that you are. Oh my God, you are so bloody good. You see after she leaves, and of course she only gets halfway down the hallway because she doesn't want to leave. This is not the way she wants to leave. Not after everything, not after all she's imagined. This is not the way she wants to leave. Angry, pissed at him. Her last words basically saying, being screw you. That's not what she wants, but she's also that girl. And she's also got her pride and she's like, I, mm, I can't be out here crying and begging this man. So she's sit there, she gets halfway down the hallway and she's waiting. She's like, please come after me, <laughs> right? One of those beautiful moments of like, I need this man to please come running after me. He has to come after me, please. And we see Rick fighting himself inside of the apartment. The real Rick inside, the scared Rick, but the real Rick realizing that this woman is leaving like that. And he's literally fighting with the logic, Rick, that's telling him he should let her go. And I love it, the way he physically acted that with his hand shaking over the doorknob because he's fighting with himself about what to do. And then finally, we see Michonne gets to the bottom. And then, oh yeah, before we get that, we have to actually bring out the fact that they realize when the storm clears that the helicopter actually would have crashed either way. I had a feeling it was gonna crash anyway. But even Rick in that moment was like, you saved our lives. If you had, we hadn't jumped out, we would be dead because it crashed into the side of this building. So again, God, <laughs> even if you're not religious, you got to think some higher power out there was looking out for y'all that she said, let's go. She literally saved their lives. They would have died in that helicopter, right? I was about to say it's thorn in that helicopter. She's not. Anyway, this is good though, because that helicopter pilot was going to be able to tell them that they jumped out. So I was always wondering what was going to happen with that, but I digress. So that was the other reason why Michonne was like, we have the perfect out now. Like they're going to think we're, we're dead. They're going to think we're dead. The helicopter, no one's going to survive a crash like that in a helicopter. They're going to think we died. This is perfect. We couldn't have set this up better ourselves. We can leave. And he is still like, no. So that was kind of a breaking point. So that's what kind of got them to him fighting himself. End of act one. But the CRM does show up right? Because of course the helicopter didn't show up back to base like it was supposed to. So they send a helicopter out, they inspect the wreckage, they shoot it. They shoot the building and they shoot it. And of course it causes structural damage to the entire thing. So Rick already left. Before he even saw the helicopter, he went after Michonne because thankfully real Rick won. Real Rick could not let her leave like that. Also, he knew that the helicopter was coming. So he came, went down there. We see that Michonne realizes that there's a whole party about to happen with all these walkers. She was about to do it. Didn't want to. The look on her face realizing she's gonna have to go back out there on her own again, which is the one thing she never wanted to be anymore, right? Going back to season four after the prison fell, she tried to go back to being that girl who, who walked alone and she can't do that anymore. She doesn't want to. She chose to be with Rick, right? Like I said, the, till death do them part, those vows mean something to Michonne, okay? <laughs> but anyway, they reunite. And Rick gets her out of there. And of course, they've got to try to make sure they're dodging these walkers that are now able to get into the building and also trying to figure out how to get out of this building because it's about to collapse now thanks to these elect these explosives that have been shot into it. And beginning of act two, they are escaping the walkers. They are back into the mode that they're very used to being in, which is fighting side by side. But Rick's not fighting the way he used to. They're fighting together, but no, they're fighting alongside each other, but not together. That'd be the way to say it. And the snarky is cute. I'm sorry, I love the snarky banter. I love, I love me a bit of snarky banter. They're going back and forth. And I love this because honestly, the cold, like shut down, dismissive type of stuff, that's hurtful. Cause you know, when people get to that place of being apathetic, that's typically when things are done right? That's an indicator that we've got, we've crossed the line now where one or both of us is no longer invested enough to care. And that was more hurtful to me. But when they're snickering and bantering, this is good. This says to me, there's still love here. There's still feelings. There's still stuff. If you still have enough energy to be bickering with each other, the love is still there and it's still hot, right? So 
they're bickering and they're fighting and it's funny. Honestly, it's cute. And we need a little bit of a break because it's very heavy. But they're doing all that. And then we see that Michonne ends up getting trapped under a chandelier. And this is after they're fighting over how they're how they're fighting walkers. Even Michonne being like, if you keep talking this commando speech to me, sir, I'm going to smack you. I can't. I'm not digging it. <laughs> but anyway, she gets trapped under a chandelier and she can't get it off herself. It's very heavy. And basically the walkers are coming and she says, you know what, Rick, you, you, sh you should go. You can go. Just leave me. And he's not hearing it. He's just like, bitch, if you don't just hurry up and kill these walkers while I get the chandelier off you. <laughs> and she's like, no, really, you should go. She says it three times. Three times she says to him, you should go. You can go. And he looks at her. And he's like, it's never going to happen. I will never leave you, right? So she's like, okay. She's like, I just need to hear you say that. <laughs> that was such, I love it. It was so sad. She's like, yeah, I just need to hear you say it. <laughs> I just needed to make sure that you're still, some of you is still in there. Okay. Whew. All right. So anyways, that's kind of act two. They finally managed to get through. But in this time, sorry, they stop inside that gym area and she's still mad. Like, she's like, what, like, what's going on here? And he's basically like, look, you're the one who's not understanding the big picture here. Like, I have to go. I have to stay there. You know, he's giving her all this BS again. And she's just like, I, I don't want to hear it. Like, you're not, you're lying to me. Like she said, you're lying to me. And what you're saying to me is hurtful. She's like, this isn't you. The Rick that I know would never hurt me. And you're hurting me right now. I need you to know that you're hurting me. And that part hurt me a lot because listen, as a black woman and as black women, we are we are so often told that we have to be strong all the damn time. And we have to be. A lot of times, unfortunately, the way society is, is set up for us, we have to have our own damn backs so many times. And we are signed being strong because we have to be. Michonne had to be strong because hello, look at the world. But one of the things that made her love Rick so much was that Rick actually wanted to protect her, not just in a physical way, but he was always so protective of her feelings, always so protective of, you know, just making sure that she was okay and not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. So for him to be saying things, these hurtful things to her, the things he said to her in the last episode, the things he's saying now, like she's finally like, I can't, like I am strong, but bro, you are hurting me. Like I love you. So this hurts to hear you say these things to me, to be treating me like this. I'm telling you, it's hurting me. Like, like, what are you going to do about that? The man that I love does not love like that. His love doesn't hurt. And we see that Rick is in there and he's, he's hearing her, but he's still not ready to let go. He's still not ready to just drop the mask, right? So again, Michonne's like, this is it. Like, if this is the man that you've turned into, then that's what I'll tell our kids is that you were too scared of everything. You were scared of what the serum could do might do, you are more scared of that than coming home and seeing your family again and fighting for what you love. So, all right, I guess we're here again. And again, that was so hurtful because again, they're kind of shutting down. And Rick's mad now at this point, which I think is good because mad is better than apathetic. And he's like, look, we're getting out of here. First of all, we're not dying in this room. <laughs> That's first of all, we're not dying in this room. Let's get up on out of here. He's angry, but I think he's angry also because Michonne is challenging whether or not she loves. he loves her. And that's one thing that he has said. Someone pointed out that since episode one, Rick has said, I love you to Michonne at least once. He is obsessed with her. They end up getting out of there. That's the end of act two is once again, it looks like they're breaking up, right? As soon as they can get out, Michonne's gonna leave and Rick's going back. But they finally get back. They finally find another room that's structurally sound. They fight their way back. And when they get back, When they get back, Rick is, I mean, Rick was already on edge from the second that she started to change out of them clothes and he took in that, bo that body. Okay, we already know that Rick loves looking at that body from the back, okay? He was already on edge from that point. But then at this point, you know, they've had their little moment there. The, the, the tension has been tensioning because of the fighting. And my man can't do, he can't take it no more. He's like, he said, I know I said we was breaking up, but can I just, can I just... Can I just tap that thing one more time? I mean, just, can we just have some goodbye sex? <laughs> My man said, let me just hit it one time. I can't, if I, if we gotta go, if we gotta break up. I need to hit it one time, like I need that. Just one last taste. And you know, Michonne really should have said no, but listen, she just, we already know Michonne's soft for that man. She has been also like, they both been chomping at the bit for this. So, you know, they decided to let that tension that's been building all episode out. 
not all episode, last two episodes, let's be real. And um, they have a, you know, I like the way they played that scene, honestly. Uh, all jokes aside, honestly, all fangirling aside, I really like the way they did that scene because I think, you know, of course, going into it, Rick was just mostly hormones, let's be real. But once it starts happening, once it's there, it starts to hit him that he's with his wife, his chosen partner, the woman he loves so much. And they're really here together in like the most intimate way a couple can be together. And he starts to have a panic attack. <laughs> Quite frankly, it hits him. And I really just feel like he played that. And this is my interpretation. People are probably going to see it differently. But my interpretation is that the feelings literally just kind of overwhelmed my guy in that moment. Like it was the overload. Like it just, it all hit him like, holy sh- Like I love this woman so freaking much and she's right here and it's happening and we're together and this is so messed up and what is happening and the, the, the wall that I've been building up and holding up, it's falling. It's falling and I don't need it to fall right now, but it is falling and he just he's just panicking. And I love that Michonne takes his hand and puts it on her heart and just looks him in his eye and starts breathing. And, you know, for those who know anything about, um, I can't think of it right now, but if any of you know anything about like sensory therapy, I cannot think of the name of the therapists that work with people who have sensory issues. Like they often work with kids like um, autistic kids, for example, etc. I used to work with them ages ago. But anyways, one of the things that they use as a way to calm your sensory system down if you're really freaking out is heartbeat is one of them. Your heartbeat or feeling, feeling somebody else's heartbeat can really calm some you, someone down. It can really help calm you down and or calm somebody else down. Um, that and also being held really tightly helps to your body to regulate your, your sensors and just get you to calm down. And anyway, all of that to say that I love that she did that and had her hand, Rick's hand on her chest and just kept breathing him through it and looking at him and just kind of just, you know, letting him know it was okay until he was able to refocus and calm down and get himself back into the moment and just like relax and realize that it was going to be good. And then we just see like Rick, the real Rick finally come out for the first time since episode one and take over that stuff. I don't really think I need to say more. <laughs> anyway, so they reconnect finally on that very primal level. And when it's all said and done, we see Rick, the real Rick still out. And he's asking about RJ finally, because he does want to know, He, you know, he wanted to know from the second he heard but now that the wall is down, he's he's being himself. He's, he wants to know about RJ. He wants to know what he looks like. What's his personality like? Like, he wants to know everything. And they have this beautiful little afterglow moment. And I mean, my, guy, my guy's ready for round two. And then the Roomba comes and just kind of snaps them out of their afterglow. And he finally asks her about the scar on her back, the X scar. And we know from The Walking Dead Prime where that was all about. And this is good for Rick because he needs to understand that Michonne has been through some stuff as well. Like, I think in some some way he knew, but, you know, when you don't see a person, you have no idea. I think overall Rick's been holding on to the idea that they were okay, which we'll get to because he actually was. But seeing that and recognizing that she's been going through some stuff is a good reality check for him for what she's been through and what she's suffered and just how much she's missed while he's been in a relatively safe place this entire time, Right. And so they have a conversation, they're, they're talking some more, and then we see that Rick is starting to fall back. When he hears the story about what happened with the ex and what Michonne had to do, it's almost like it starts to hit him. That and the fact that the foundation starts shaking again, he starts to slowly feel the wall come back up again, right? And Michonne is like, you know what? No, we're, we're, we need to finish this. Like, I'm not doing back and forth again. Like, I can't anymore. I'm not taking a step out of this apartment until we figure out what we're doing. And this is when we have the amazing third act, when it really comes together, where she just keeps challenging him and she just keeps telling him, look, I, I just need to understand, like, please help me understand what happened to you to make you like this. Because I know it's more... Like all the excuses you're giving me are lies. They're lies and excuses. That's none of these things would be enough of the Rick, enough for the Rick that I know to keep him living in this hell and not coming home to his family. Finally, 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 Rick finally lets, lets go. He finally lets the wall down all the way. And he has that honest, raw conversation with her. 
And before we get into the details of that conversation, I just want to say I love how throughout all the seasons of The Walking Dead, the only person Rick has ever been that viscerally raw and honest with has been Michonne. He was never that way with Lori. He was never that way with, with Shane. He was never that way with Daryl. It has always been Michonne and maybe Carl to an extent, but that's it. Like that is his soulmate on so many levels. But anyway, I just love that that's the one person he finally felt like he could say the things that scare him most too, that he finally felt safe enough with her to say that. And anyways, he goes into it and he basically, cause she asks him, she starts with the beautiful question of why did you come back out after me? Like after I left the first time, why did you come after me? You could have let me go. That was the perfect time to let me go. And he says it. He's like, you are the love of my life, right? He's like, when you walked out that door, I felt like my heart had ripped, been ripped out and you'd taken it with you. Like, I couldn't I couldn't live that way. I couldn't live knowing that that's the way we, we had our last words. Like, I couldn't do it. And then she was like, okay, there's the, there's the start. There's the first true thing you've said. Now keep, like, let's follow this thread. Why? Why? Like, what's happening to you? That's true. And that's how you feel about me. And I know that's how you feel about our kids. Why are you willing to risk that for this BS that you've been telling me? And finally, he lets her know that it's about Carl. It's about her. It's about the fact that he had died inside, basically. And we saw that in episode one in the letter, the final letter he wrote to Michonne that she never got. He said, I've chosen to die, even though I'm not leaving here anymore, right? Right. And that was what happened. He basically tried to numb his feelings and said, okay, I can live with the idea that somewhere out there, Michonne and Judith are okay. They're living their life. They're happy. They're safe. And some of that is because of me. And I'm just going to do what I can here. I'm just going to be a walking zombie. I'm going to be the walking dead. <laughs> Look at that. I will be the walking dead for the rest of my life because I feel like that's what I have to do to keep them safe. That was the, the trade-off. And he said, like, I could do that. He's like, I mourned it. He's like, it, it just about killed me. And we saw that in episode one, he was this close to taking himself out. But he said, I, I, I barely got through it. But what kept me going, like he said, dreaming of Carl, dreaming of you. Those are the things that kept me going for so long. But then I couldn't even do that anymore. So I basically just said, I'm done. I basically, I died in any meaningful sense of the word, in the sense of like enjoying life, caring about anything, I'm gone. And then he's like, but then you show up and then you make me feel alive again. And he's like, I just... The more I thought about it, the more the idea of you being taken from me forever, especially like, you know, taken from me, I can't survive that. He's like, I don't think I can die again like that. I don't think I can go back into that robotic, you know, shell of myself again if I lose you this time. I don't think so. He's like, I just, I can't. That would break me. And that's why I'm scared. That's why I don't want to risk it. That's why I'm trying to believe the lie because I'm too scared. I'm not scared of the CRM. I'm scared of what will happen if I lose you and I can't survive it. And he says it straight up, without you, I die. Like even repeating those lines, I'm about to choke up. Like, so, deny Guerrero, damn girl, ain't that. Anyways, so we get the whole truth and it's beautiful and Andy Lincoln killed it and I was a mess and but we get to the crux of it. And finally, Michonne's like, thank God, I finally saw my man. My man is finally here. The man that I fell in love with is finally here. And she talks him through it. And I'm not going to go through all of it, you know, but the bottom line is she lets him know that this life, she, she drops some real life bars, some real life bars in this episode where she says to him, this life, we have no guarantees. There's no guarantees. We don't know what's going to happen. Just like Rick saying that he can protect them from the inside. He doesn't know that. And in fact, the chances are slim to none. This life, the best thing you can do is do what you love, be with the people you love and love on them like there is no tomorrow because it's not guaranteed, people. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We all, all we have is today. So especially in the world of The Walking Dead where everything has gone to hell and you could literally be bitten at any moment, you gotta live every life, every day, sorry, like it's your last and you need to love the people that you love hard. And that's what she says to him. She's like, we need to love on each other. We need to work harder on building and protecting what we love. That's what this life is all about. Would the Rick that cut his hand off, and remember she talked to the nub, would the Rick that cut his hand off be okay with, with dying like that? And we already know the answer. Like he wouldn't have been okay with it. So they have their breakthrough moment finally. And you know, she basically tells him that like she has many times before in this show, she brings him back and lets him know that we can do anything together. As long as we're on the same page, as long as we have the same focus, which is, our love for each other and a love for our family and protecting it, we can do everything. We always figure out a way, even when it's impossible. 
but you need to be on board. I can't do it alone. And so finally Rick sees the light and he's, he's done. Like that's his woman. Like he, you know, he never really could resist her, but yes, they just have their beautiful moment, their breakthrough. And it's just, there aren't enough words in my vocabulary to describe how amazing that scene was and how beautiful it was and how it just really helped to wrap up all these things that needed to be wrapped up. As I said at the beginning of this review, this is an abbreviated season, so we don't have the time to kind of do the longer storytelling, but we needed this. I said this back in episode two, that they're both two different people now in many ways, and they needed to reconcile that to some degree. I mean, Michonne's less of a departure from herself because she's been living her life the way she wants to, but... Rick's been through a lot and they needed to have that come to Jesus. And they did finally. And now they are finally back on the same page. And you can see Rick, and I think they did such a good job. Again, I got to give all my props to Andy again. Give him his Emmy. If you look at Andy and the way he was acting in episode, towards the end of episode one, and even into episode two, and how he was acting at the end of this episode, he went from being like stone-faced and looking very heavy to literally like someone, like Andy we know, right? He actually looked like Andy and not so much like Rick. Smiley, bright, alive. It's like he finally took this weight off of the BS he's been trying to tell himself and the weight of the fear he's been holding on to for so long. And now he just wants to live. He's living again and he's with the woman he loves. So that's even more. And like, we see it like, they practically banging their way all the way to the car. <laughs> they banging in the elevator. They banging in the car. Like they, like the man is alive. He's alive again. He feels alive again. Michonne has got a new, she's got a new fire under her. So they're back out on the road. They're going to make a run for it. Cause for as, as, as of now, the CRM thinks they're dead. Now we all know that as soon as Jadis finds out about this, she's absolutely going to go look for proof of life. We know that she's not going to be okay with that. The, the helicopter will not be enough. She's going to look for bodies. And we know she's going to try to go back to Alexandria because it's, it's Jadis. So I don't think we're quite done yet, but for now, our two are gone. I'm not sure of where they are. I could, could have sworn that they were further out west, but I don't know how far the helicopter got before they fell out of it. But any, anyway, Michonne said that they have enough between the EV being charged and the fact that they've got gas in the back. Maybe that's where the gas man guy came from. But anyway, they say they have enough to get home. So home is like East Coast, right? They're like Virginia-ish. So yeah, we'll see whether or not that's actually the case. And we also know that the, everyone's not actually in uh, Alexandria right now, but either way, she thinks that they've got enough to get all the way back. They're in the loudest possible vehicle. It's bright yellow and it's definitely gonna attract, um, you know, again, if we're, we've got choppers in the skies, they will definitely notice a lone shiny vehicle just cruising down the street. But either way, we'll have to see what happens. We have two episodes left, which I'm heartbroken about. Like, honestly, this is such a good episode. Like this is a show that could honestly go on for 16 episodes. Like this, we needed 16 episodes of. But anyway, we are to the point now where they're finally on the road. They have broken free for now. And for now, Rick is on board and I'm hoping that this sticks because he definitely went back and forth. But I do think we're good now. I think Rick is finally back on board with the idea that he would rather die trying his best to be free than try to live in that emotional and mental prison that he'd put himself in. Yeah, I. this episode was fantastic. As I said, I, this was a long review. My apologies, guys. But there was so much to cover. So much to cover. And I know there's still things that I missed. But I enjoyed it thoroughly. It had me in my feels. It had me laughing. It had my heart bursting. It was just amazing. This was fantastic television. If we had television like this all the time, people, I'd never leave my house. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing it's not all that good. But this is what this is what happens when you have passionate actors, passionate writers, passionate producers. This is just what happens when everybody is on point and knows what they're doing and and we are reaping the benefits and I'm so grateful. So like I said, give Deny her writing Emmy, give her her acting Emmy, give Andy Lincoln his Emmy for this episode, if nothing else, but for the whole series, they both deserve all the awards, all of them. You know what? I'll even throw Gimple one too, because he's producing this as well. The only reason I'm still salty is because seeing all those flashbacks of Carl, never forgive you for that, Gimple. I'll never forgive you for that. But anyway, this was an excellent episode. Fantastic in every way. Again, Cannot wait. Can't believe we have another long seven days till the next one, but I'm looking forward to it. And we better get a season two is all I got to say. We better get one. We better because this is already like if AMC has not already signed the, the contracts for season two, then I don't know what to tell y'all. So whew, 
I hope you guys enjoyed this roller coaster as much as I did. Please sound off in the comments. Let me know what your favorite part of this episode was. What moved you? What got you to tears? What had you laughing? Please let me know in the comments below. I've been enjoying it so much and this has been great. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed watching along with me. Please show some love to this video and I will see you next week.